Hello everyone. Once again, welcome to the retail math class. This is Julie Zhang, an instructor for this class. You can call me either Dr. Zhang or Professor Zhang. So today we are going to talk about the first chapter of the class. So introduction to the retail math. Merchandising Mathematics for Retailing. We are using the book by Cynthia Eastering and Beth Wost, 5th edition. And the chapter 1, we are going to talk about the introduction for this overall you know, course. And chapter 1, part 1. We are going to have two parts for chapter 1. And let's go ahead and start to talk about the objectives of the chapter 1. For this class, and for the chapter one, the objectives for this chapter include you need to be able to define retail mer merchandising. Second, to describe retail store organization and to understand merchandising from a corporate level and a store level and to recognize the importance of mathematics as a merchandising tool in the achieving of profit. Especially for chapter 1, we are going to talk about definition of retailing and merchandising and retail store organization, relationship of merchandising to other division, and importance of mathematics to buying and merchandising. So if you are not familiar with the terms that I already mentioned, don't worry about it because we are going to talk about that throughout the semester and throughout this chapter. So part one, chapter one, we are going to talk about the definition of retailing and merchandising and retail store organization. So let's start from the definition of retailing and merchandising. Have you have ever heard about the terms retailing and merchandising? Maybe you heard about it, but sometimes you will be confused because we are using these terms interchangeably. So these two terms are often confused, but I want to tell you the difference between these two terms and these two important terms for learning this class. Retailing is more like the last step in the supply chain and then moves I mean the goods from the producer to the final customer and this retailing definition of the retailing include all the functions involved in obtaining goods from manufacturers and wholesaler and selling these goods to the final customer so manufacturers mean the people who make the product. So like a supplier who make the clothing or like food to sell to the wholesaler or to the retailer. Wholesaler kind of middleman before they get into the point to the actual store, right? So, or it can be the format of the retailer as well, but it's more like a middleman and they can go to the finer customer, right? So that's more like the that final stage of the activities to sell the products to the customer. And merchandising, this term is used a lot with the different purposes. This merchandising includes all activities necessary to buy and sell merchandise at a profit. So according to the American Marketing Association, any promotional activities or people how to identify the product to make profit to the store can be called as a merchandising or merchandising activities. So it can not only include the estimating customers' needs and wants, planning purchases, buying product goods and making goods available to their customer and how you can motiv motivate your customer to buy the product all these kind of activities that involved to the to sell the product at a profit is called as a merchandising so do you see the difference between these two terms and we're going to use these terms a lot especially in the retail field so if you understand this term 
and we can go to the next slide. And to understand the merchandising, you have to know about five rights of merchandising. What are the five rights? So when you try to do this activity to sell the product, to make a profit, what are the important components? The first, you need to have a right to merchandise. So that means that you have to have a right product to your customer. For example, if your customer are a certain age, like, you know, 20, you know, then it's more likely to sell something related to that age group compared to the you sell something to the different age group, right? So you have to provide the right merchandise to your customer. And second, you have to provide product at the right place. For example, you want to sell the cord, I mean the winter jacket, then you have to think of where you can sell. Do you think you can sell in Hawaii? No, right? It's more likely to be sold in the cold area, such as where? Minnesota or Colorado or Alaska, it would be better. So you have to think about the right place. And also you have to think about the right time. When is going to be the right timing? So summer product, winter product, you have to provide these goods right before people will come and buy the product. So like summer, Swimming suit is better be sold right before the summer season. Then people will buy and enjoy to buy this product to enjoy the summertime. So you have to choose the right time. And also right quantities. That means that amount of the product. Whether you're selling in the really big city like in New York or if you're selling that in Atlanta and think about that you're selling this item in the small local area or like suburban you know places then you have to differentiate the amount of the product is more likely to be sold more quantities in the big cities right and right price of course and your customer will be different and some of your customer will be more sensitive to the price so it's better to choose the right price and also think about that when you think about the discount stores such as Walmart or Target, what price do you expect? All right, so the concept is the discount store, so you are more likely to expect the better and low price. So you have to think about your concept of the store and you have to provide the right price of the product to your customer in your store. And also, you have to think about merchandising by manufacturer and wholesaler. So not just the retailer, but people who make it and the big wholesaler and retailer because you're concerned with the sales and inventory and you will sell rails to make a profit and you know how to apply mathematic concept to merchandising. So really important, merchandising concept is really important for all these components, functions of the store, manufacturer, wholesaler, and retailers. And also important concept in retail store organization. So we're going to talk about the retail store organization, the form of the retail store and the big company. Sometimes we call it as a headquarter or big organization and according to Paul Major, he developed this four function plan for store organization in 1927 and these four important functions he developed include merchandising and financial control, store operation and management, and sales promotion. So merchandising, do you remember that? all these activities involved in selling the product to make a profit and financial control it can be either how you manage that you know in the price and so on or overall financial control for your budget for the company or how you can smoothly make your store operate it how you can managing you know people and store operation and how you can make a good marketing or promotion plan for your sales 
four of these functions are considered as a four significant function plan for store organization, according to Marcher. And I'll show you the next slide. This one is going to be the, one of the examples of store, retail store organization. Because nowadays, there are even more functions needed for the store. So you can see more concept addition to this merchandising, financial control, store operations, and sales promotion. This is from the West Seal company, and you can see this organizational chart for the typical retail store corporation. So we talked about the merchandising, so you can see that we have a merchandising here and some financial control, the financial department, and you can see this like store operation, and you can see some marketing promotion here. So these are the four basic function, important function provided by Mature. But now you can see because of more skills or function needed in nowadays, you know. So you can see more functions available and they have more departments such as the store construction, maintenance, construction, and also technology and human resources. That means that you know how you can hire people and labor relation and also about the land related. So real estate, land purchasing, store and expansion as well, also one of part of the function of the store retail store organization but we're gonna mainly talk about this part about merchandising planning buying product development especially met this retail mess that you're gonna learn in this class we apply you will be applied to many different functions of the store organization but more likely to be applied in this merchandising planning buying and product development so it will be very exciting to talk about all this and we're going to talk more about details about retail mass from the next chapter. So let's talk about the merchandising function. Because of that, all the recent changes in store ownership, also there is like a changes in retail store organization. So merchandising function has changed over the years. So one of the examples is about the flagship store. Have you ever heard about the flagship store? And imagine that, what that is. Yeah. The earlier time, the flagship store was defined as the original, the first store location for the company. But the concept the definition of the flagship store changes nowadays and they can be called as a, the largest store, largest store for the company. So it may not be just one store. You can have more than one store, the largest store around the world or around the United States. Or it, it can be also defined as a prototype store. That means that your newest store, like a most innovative and new store format that you have. So you can see that the, this concept also kind of changed over the times. And as you can see, you could see from the chart, the merchandising function and all these functions related to the merchandising has been changed because of the changes you know, over the time. And for this merchandising function, we're going to talk about two different concepts. The first one is going to be centralized merchandising. Centralized merchandising basically is talking about all controlled by the main headquarter. So all these four buying functions, including the buying, planning, distribution, product development, will be controlled by the main office. That means the main headquarter, the biggest I mean, the fun, I mean the place of the company. So four fun, buying functions for the centralized mer merchandising include number one, buy. So you have to buy the product, right? So you have to buy the product to sell your customer. So how you can develop the merchandising plans, how you can select, order, and you can pricing the goods 
and how you can manage the assortment. Assortment means that types of products. So whether you want to have just like one item or one style, whether you want to have like 10 styles, it's going to be the assortment. So variety of the products. And planning is going to be how to analyze the sales history and how you can analyze the market trend and make a plan for the next season or next year or for the next few years. And distribution means that how you can allocate the merchandise to the stores. Imagine that you have one big headquarter like JCPenney is in you know, Texas headquarters in Texas, but you can see JCPenney all over the United States, right? So how you can allocate this merchandise to the different stores, that's going to be the distribution. And product development, identify the product idea for internal development. So for example, you can see if you go to Walmart or like a Target, they have many different kind of product from the different Vendor. Vendors means that who made the product and sell that product to the retail store. And also at the same time, you will see some private labels, such as Target has Archer's Farm and Walmart. You can see that the great value. So these are the only product you can buy from these retailers. And especially this private label is developed based on the product development month of the company so you also have to get the idea identify your own product to your customer and we call that specific customer for the specific store as a target market so for example when you think about the um, one some of the store specialty store for example j crew who are the target market, their specific customer, they want to sell the product. There are going to be somewhere like between like 25 and like a 40 age, you know, I mean 35 who are the career woman and men. You know? So these are going to be the specific target market they can think about. And you have to develop the product based on your specific target market. So we know we already talked about decentralized merchandising. So on the other hand, we can talk about the decentralized merchandising. So we talked about the centralized merchandising as a, you know, one headquarter control or this like a buying, planning, distribution, and product development. So buying functions are performed at central office or corporate headquarter, and expenses can be reduced and profits are increased because this is well operated and controlled from the headquarters. Compared to that, in decentralized merchandising, that means that it's not just by the one headquarter. So all these you know, different stores for this company can buy and do different kind of activities. So buying functions are performed performed at store, not from the headquarter or the central office. So compared to the centralized merchandising, the buyer of the specific store has more had more close closer relationship with their customer compared to the centralized merchandising. So these are like all the big pictures about the concept for this chapter. So we are going to talk more about the relationship between the merchandising and other division. And also we are going to talk about importance of mathematics, retail mathematics. So pretty much that's really important concept for this class. We're going to talk about that in the next time. So that's E4, the part one of the chapter one, and I'll see you the next time.